I'm Darren Ashton, Product Manager for Compact for North America at Volvo Construction Equipment. So today I'm very pleased to talk about our newest addition to the family, our ECR40. This is in the three and a half ton range and it is a reduced tail swing. This one is equipped with a longer arm so we do have additional counterweight to help with that. One of the nice features about all of our compact machines is the side engine compartment. Inside of this engine bay, it's very easy to get access to things like your starters, alternator, fuel system, rads, battery. So those people that are owner operators or in a rental place and has a mechanic, it's very easy for them to do daily maintenance and checks throughout the day. As we move around towards the back of the machine, I did mention about the counterweight being an additional one as it being a reduced tail swing with a long arm. And underneath this hood is we have the master control valve in a very visible location to make sure you can inspect that on a daily basis. And you do that because we also have our diesel fills in here. And a couple of the nice reasons for putting that in there, it keeps it out of the element, so no water or stuff like that can ingress in there by mistake. And also, same key as the rest of the machine to unlock the fuel cap. We also have our patented hydraulic filter here. This is for topping up some of the hydraulic oils but it also uses the case drains on the motors to be able to monitor any kind of degradation that could happen in a motor before it contaminates the rest of the hydraulic system. As we move towards the cab side, there's a couple more maintenance positions that are worth noting. One is your fuse panel is right here. You don't need any kind of tools. You just spin the knob here. You can open up and that is your fuse panel. Also, one of the other maintenance areas where people usually notice when the air conditioning isn't working well is where the cab filter is. So we got filtered air going into the cab. That filter is accessible right here, once again from ground level, and easy for any operator to take care of at that time. Also from this side is a toolbox. So you can open up and store your grease gun and chains and different things like that right underneath there. We have brightened both the threshold plate and the arm handle. They can be removed and repainted as they wear out over time. Inside of the cab, you're going to experience one of the largest cabs in the industry. This cab is the same cab that we have all the way up to our 5.8 metric ton machine. Lots of room in behind of the seat. Gives you the ability to lay back a little bit if you want to, but one of the main reasons for that is to have that distance from the back window. If you're ever sitting there working and have sun shining through the back, instead of having just a small space between the gap and the glass, you've got a large area. But the other advantage as well is to be able to have our HVAC system have air circulating around in the back. There is a vent back there which is directional and you can move that to whether it goes against the window or against the back of your head where most people just have all their heating and stuff down on the floor. We have a five inch display in there that controls most of the operational stuff for the machine. We can have pattern control change, set up different hydraulic flows for attachments. On those setups, you can set them up for a hammer or a bio-directional circuit like a thumb. You can also set up how it ramps up and ramps down. We've improved our blade control. So now it's on a little lever and it actually advanced our float as well on the blade control. Now you can have it in float and still be able to operate to lift the blade up if you're having too much material on a back drag, or you can turn it off and on by a switch instead of before where you used to have to push it forward and then lock it into that detail. You have an hour meter that is at ground level, so anyone can see what hours are on that meter. Our flat glass roll-up window, we're able to take this lower piece and connect it to that window so you don't have other places where you store it, usually along the sidewall or the back, so you don't have to look through two panes of glass if you have this bottom window out. When we get to the boom and arm, we have casting. We also have um, casting on our shear points give rigidity. 
We also have our cylinder over on the left hand side. So when you articulate the boom, you don't have any kind of stuff that will stick out outside of the radius of the machine. We have two different sets of hydraulics on this one, X1 and X3. They're both independent circuits, so you could use them in conjunction with each other. One is a bio-directional circuit and can be a single directional circuit as well. And the other one's for more like tilt rotator buckets. It's got a lower flow of volume on it, different line sizes. This is a factory thumb and factory hydraulic coupler as well. So with the Volvo attachments, the OEM attachments, and I know there's lots of different ones out there, we're able to not only take the coupler off and pin the bucket back on because it has the same pin dimensions, but we're able to drop the bucket and spin it 180 degrees and use it like a shovel if it's needed. Also, one of the things on this three and a half ton project we extended our undercarriage, so we elongated it and we also brought it down a little bit to have increased stability. Before, our ground contact was from about here to here, and now with that extension and stuff like that, ground contact is from here all the way over to here. Really increase the stability of the machine, especially if you're working on a side slope. For the latest in construction equipment, sign up for our daily newsletter. Just click the link below.